everybody knows that if you're going to be a writer, you're going to get rejected. And I think the most frustrating thing for writers is the sense that they don't know why. And so they're just throwing into the void and just continually doing the same thing. Except that I think that that's not always the case. I think that you can evaluate um, the rejections that are coming in in some way and make changes. I mean, I believe that almost every query should be getting some requests. I really believe that. And if you're not, you need to be looking at your query. And if you really think your query is as strong as the cover, the cover copy on the back of a book, mm. then you don't have a marketable enough book. And I think those are the two biggest reasons why you're getting rejection is that your blurb isn't telling an exciting and different enough story to grab an agent's attention. But it's not the font. It's not Times New Roman versus Courier. No, no. And, and to be honest, I mean, word count can sometimes play a role in it. But 99% of the time, it's the marketability of the book. Really. Well, I think um, getting a rejection where you don't know why is kind of like when someone breaks up with you and you don't know what you did to make them break up with you and you really liked them, but you don't know why all of a sudden they stopped liking you and you never really find out the answers and it kind of haunts you. Right, right. So if, if this is, if we're using that metaphor for your writing, then how do you find out why you got dumped or not picked up in the first place. And I think it's because something was missing. Yeah. Usually when somebody breaks up with you, something is missing in your relationship. It's just not there. So in this case, something is missing in your query letter or you've focused so much on your work that you haven't put the passion that's in your work in the query letter. Like your, your query letter needs to sing as much as your book does. Yeah. So then you need to ask yourself, what, what can I do to go back and revamp it until it's really shining? Well, and sometimes that's why I recommend writing the query letter before you write the, the book. So when you have the idea for the book, I recommend sitting down and writing the query letter without really processing what your book is about. But really, like, I have an idea for, you know, a book retreat mystery series. So I would write the query letter in a way that what would make this book the most exciting book it could be. And then you write your book to your query, which isn't a plot outline. It's not a synopsis. It's two paragraphs of this book would blow my mind. And so right. what if you took that query letter to your critique group or to your workshop and instead of showing them your work that day, you show them your query letter and say, would you want to read this book? Because that's what you're asking the query letter to do. It's, it's supposed to entice people to go, I want to read this book. I also book. recommend if your critique group or your workshop has already read the book, then find a different group for your query letter. Yeah, Be I think that's a great advice. And the, the one thing I think authors forget, especially when they're frustrated by queries, is that agents are readers. And all we want is a book a great book to read. And we are approaching query letters in the same way you as readers are wandering the bookstore looking for a good book. You're looking to make a $30 investment. I am also looking for a similar investment. I am looking for something that I want to invest my time and money into to try to sell. And that's no different, really. Right. And for the query letter, I mean, I think a lot of writers get kind of tied up on the what is what I have to get into here. So I have to get this in, I have to get this and I have to get this in. And then you get all stuck on the structure, which is super important. You need the structure, like think of it as a trellis for your, your rose vine, your climbing vine. So the trellis is what the agent has asked you to give to them in the query letter. You get all that down, you make sure your grammar's perfect, your punctuation's perfect. But the roses are what you wrote about in your book. And if they can't really see them, smell them, get a sense of the texture, then they're not going to ask for it. So get the structure on one hand, but don't get obsessed with that because your voice and your passion has to come through just as strongly as checking off the, the check marks on, you know, what I need to send to this person. I so don't get hung up on that. No, I think you're exactly right. And it's almost 100% about the blurb, you know, we just... Yeah just want to know that this is a book that we want to read.
And I, and I think that you touched on something when you said that writers get frustrated with rejections because definitely, we definitely do. And I think there might be a point where if you've got, I don't know, maybe like a dozen rejections for your project, you maybe need to stop and re-examine that query letter and say, is this as amazing as it should be? Is this, am I getting the, this is not my cup of tea or from one person or are you getting it from 20 people? Because that's not your project. They don't have your project. That's just one letter. So it might be time to stop. Yes. Don't be frustrated, get fired up and punch today in the face. <laughs> and rework your query letter and resend. Great and good luck. Good luck.